after Lance had left, uh, uh, Sammy and Clem and of course uh, their pig uh, Barbie, they, they were they were getting ready to go. But but uh, Violet had a question for him. She said, "You know, while you're here, I've been wondering about something. Have you have you seen Mario? I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, is he okay? Is he around?" And uh, I should explain, Mario <clears throat> was a, <clears throat> he's a landscaper, I guess is what you'd call him. He was a kind of a handyman that worked in that area, but what, in the spread. But what made him so unique was he had a pet parrot that, that was with him all the time, on his shoulder if he could be, or else perched really close to wherever he was working. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, pe people said, well, I guess it was true that uh, that uh, Mario could have had all kinds of jobs because he's a highly skilled guy, but but he he was not willing to work someplace where the parrot couldn't be with him. <laughs> they were inseparable and kind of a local personality. And and uh, Violet hadn't seen him in a while, and and uh, Clem said, uh, "Oh yeah, no, I've seen him. He he's working a little bit closer to Mannequin." Uh, Monacan River uh, Park. Uh, he's got a job down there. Yeah, he, he's okay. And she said, all right, I, I just wondered. And Well, anyway, th they left. And Now, let's get back to Lance. Lance, he took off. Uh, I, you know, I, part of him wanted to just go because he, he had that energy. Uh, he was psyched uh, to be on his bike and covering distance. He, he was going to come back that evening. But anyway, he set out, and he knew where he was going. He uh, he went up Asselt Street and then down uh, Ave Ave, uh, Avalon Avenue uh, a little bit, and then, then turned left onto Tolkien Street. And Tolkien Street was, was the one that climbed up and went around behind the high school and then uh, and then came back down the other side. It was kind of a loop. The, the school buses used it. And so uh, these hills were not steep. Uh, he was having no trouble at all. The knee was fine. He was in great shape. And he got up there and uh, <clears throat> chose of the three uh, roads that, that spread out, he chose the middle one, Shakespeare Road, and uh, headed out that. Now, it continued to climb a little bit, but not, not very much. And, and that's the way it continued for miles. Uh, and uh, you know, at first, when they were near the high, when he was near the high school, the the houses were just palatial. I mean, they this was, I guess you might call it Snob Hill. I mean, those that didn't live up there might call it Snob Hill because it was they were really fancy houses. But what got his attention was the street names as he was going along. There was uh, there was Wordsworth Street, and there was a North. North Wordsworth Street and, and South Wordsworth Street, and then Coleridge Streets, Streets, uh, Shelley, uh, Hardy, uh, Hardy Streets. Uh, you know, on they went, and they all. Lance couldn't peg them all, but he remembered these names from being in school because he he had that truly remarkable teacher, uh, Mr. Uh, Holmes. Uh, was his name, uh, and it was in 10th grade actually, that had left his mark on him. And uh, and so he'd remembered these names. He hadn't done great in, in the class, but he'd listened to, to the stories. So he's pedaling along, and, and then he starts seeing names that were a little bit more foreign. There was a Defoe Street, and uh, they, they look French, a Rousseau uh, Street. Uh, and as I say, sometimes they were just north and south, and sometimes they were kind of matched together. There was a Hugo Street matched against the Dumas Street. Now it looked like dumbass. That's the way Tatus always talked about. He didn't like the fact that uh, his his city had a street in it named Dumbass Street, but <laughs> that's Tatus for you. Uh, that was the French section. Uh, what else was there there? I mean, there were a bunch. Uh, there, there was a, a Goethe Street, now that was German. Uh, I'm telling you, it, it, Lance didn't know all this, I'm kind of telling you. As a matter of fact, I should also back up and explain that all these streets had these names because it was part of the heritage of Richland, North Virginia, 
that this was going to be a city of the classics. Not just a classic city, but a city of, now it was a city of free beer, of classics, and it was going to be a city of baskets. Uh, uh, unusual, I know, but, but that's where it was. So on they went, and um, let's see, some of the names got to be sort of more modern. Well, some of them he just didn't know at all. There was a Borsodi Street, and uh, and uh, what else? There, 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 there was a Carson Street. Uh, some of them say he, he thought could that have been Rachel, Rachel Carson, who, whom he knew from uh, uh, science class. Oh, what else were there? There were so many streets here, uh, but they all were names, not of politicians, not of generals or soldiers. They were names of people who had affected culture with their classics. That, that, that had been the idea. On he went. There was a Twain Street, you might guess. There was a Melville Street. This was kind of the American section. A Hawthorne Street. Um, although they were called, after a while they were called lanes instead of streets. The ones going out were roads and the ones going across were streets, but then they turned into lanes. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a, a bunch, uh, you know, but eventually, I mean, he, he was, this went on for 20 miles. I mean, there were, there were street after street after street. Now they got to be further spread out. And when he was finally getting way toward the end, let's see, there was a Holmgren Street, a, a Mollison Street opposite that, uh, or Lane. And, uh, and then an Emerson uh, Lane. And, uh, and right really at the, I, I, he had a feeling he was almost in the woods now. He came to a Thoreau uh, Lane. And uh, he, he, he looked down that. He was tempted to just ride his bike down there because he just had a suspicion that, he, he just wondered if whoever owned property down Thoreau Street didn't have some pond down there. And, weren't living in some kind of a cabin. Uh, but it was entertaining not just to ride. And all the time he was going toward the mountains. And by this time he was beginning to just catch a glimpse of the the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, he guess it was, because the road was pretty straight. And uh, he was just catching a glimpse of it. And, as, and still he'd been climbing this whole time, he'd probably gone 30 miles now, and in general it was climbing. He'd been riding for three hours to do that. <clears throat> but then he finally came to a road that said Border Road, and it was a, like a crossroads that, that went across. And it was a little bit more of a road, but there'd been no traffic in, in any of this area. And there he stopped, and he thought he probably better call this the place where he's going to turn around. And so he, he went off the road and put his bike up against the tree and he got out a, a lunch that he had and, and sat there a while.